Imagine there was a way to take control of your child's education. Imagine there was a way to create a safe learning environment that harnesses their unique talents to reach their full potential. Imagine being able to give your child an internationally accredited education, a blended learning environment where they can learn at their own pace from anywhere in the world. Education Reimagined. And uh, a very good evening from myself, Jane Lindy Thomas. Uh, I am your MC for the evening. Uh, a little bit of an uh, overview, and of course, welcome to uh, Cambridge Learn's first ever virtual open day. I mean, how cool is that? Um, agenda, we will hear from uh, Cecilia Reinecke, uh, the school principal, uh, as well as an introduction to the platform, uh, hear from some of the students. Uh, we will also hear from Dr. Jose uh, Rivera from Cognia, uh, Brett uh, Garner, uh, Deputy Principal, as well as CEO uh, Claudia Swartzberg, and then our closing. So it really is fantastic to be with you uh, this evening. We have been so uh, looking forward to yeah sharing what Cambridge Learns all about. Just to uh, remember, panelists, please set your mics to mute until it's your turn to speak. Uh, videos and mics only for our panelists and hosts. Uh, educational consultants are available to answer any questions in the Q&A section, which is cool. And uh, the video will be going onto Facebook and YouTube afterwards. So a little bit about myself. Um, as I said, I'm Jane Lindley Thomas. I'm a radio presenter from sunny KZN. Uh, I've been with East Coast Radio since 2004. Actually, an intention that was set at the age of six. Uh, so it really goes to show that you can, you know, uh, plant seeds at a very early age. I remember driving to school with my dad. I was sitting in the back seat and I said to him while listening to the radio, one day I want to be on radio, dad. Uh, I'm going to be on East Coast Radio. And what I loved about radio it was the sense of community, um, you know, that you could hear the anchor talking about current affairs and then going to traffic and then greet someone like, hey, happy birthday to Mary. And I was like, my goodness gracious, how do they know Mary? I just love the sense of community. So I'm still with East Coast Radio. Uh, I want to get to 20 years uh, with the wonderful brand. And I also have uh, three precious children, including a set of twins. Now, about four years ago, I was doing a lunchtime show on East Coast, and I got an email from a gentleman by the name of Paul Bushel. Now, Paul Bushel is a psychologist. He's a cognitive behavioral specialist. And he said to me, I've written this book, which is an epic book. Um, I would love you to do the foreword for it. And I thought, gosh, how cheeky. I mean, you haven't even sent me a book. And then I Googled and saw how good looking he was and said, what time can you be at East Coast Radio? <laughs> but in all honesty, uh, with my time being on radio and holding space for human stories, and with Paul's time as a psychologist, uh, we realized that in a lot of stories that we covered, if kindness had been in play, circumstance would be different. And that was really something that was really um, an aha moment for me. I, I think because kindness gets um, a reputation for being soft and submissive, when actually kindness is a hard word, it's a wonderfully hard word, but it goes so much further than a slogan on a t-shirt or a unicorn um, or a rainbow. Uh, kind is being able to have uncomfortable conversations, saying, this is my boundary. I'm not going to go any further. And, you know, Paul and I, we go into schools. We do um, EQ development with learners as well as with staff. Um, we go into corporate spaces. And it's amazing because, you know, we all are able to be kind a lot easier maybe on a Friday afternoon than we are on a Monday. So we're kind of on this mission to help people find their kind um, through uh, facilitation, through workshops, uh, through podcasts. Um, it really is the most inspiring journey. So I'm kind of the storyteller. Uh, I share all my failures and all my successes. And then Paul comes in from a cognitive behavioral specialist point of view. And we kind of feel that there's so much importance in being able to apply the learning. You know, it's all very well and good hearing someone inspire you, uh, but then you leave the room and then you're like, well, now what? I'm really such a firm believer of being able to remind people that they are agents in their own life. And I think more than ever, if we look at the last 18 months of what we've been through, it has never been more evident 
that we can do hard things. And it's been tough. I mean, if someone has said to you 18 months ago, this is what your life's going to look like, you would say, never, I could never do that. But here we are, sitting on a virtual platform together. Remember the first days of doing meetings on Zoom. Mute on, mute off. I can't see, your camera's on. And let's be honest, not a lot of us wore pants and shoes at that stage of the game. I'm very happy to tell you I'm fully dressed tonight, including my shoes. (laughs) But yeah, we've also learned that we can do things differently. And that's what I love about Cambry Learn is... You know, I have three kids at three different schools and people say, Jane, you are mad. Why do you do that? And to add insult to injury in inverted commas, my one son is on the one side of KZN and my other son is on the other side of KZN and my daughter is kind of in the middle. And the reason is I am such a firm believer that there is a special place in the system for every child. So my oldest son is a lot more creative So he's gone to a school that we believe is right for him. My daughters are more of a mainstreamer and my other son is in a remedial institution. And I really do believe that it's not a one fit fits all. I was a child that really battled in the system. Academics were hard for me. School was hard for me. I loved the social side of school. So I was in the drama room all the time. I was doing Toastmasters. I was out and about doing outreach programs. And uh, yeah, I I often say in this facilitations that I do at schools, you know, we are so much more, the adults in the room, um, we are destined for so much more than losing weight and paying school fees. Yeah. And I know that you're thinking, well, that hit me deep because sometimes I think we get conditioned to thinking that's what we're doing here. Same thing with the kids. You are not the mark on your paper. You are the remark. You know, you are the, I showed up. I tried my best progress not perfection will be on my tombstone one day I take that into my marriage I take that into my motherhood I take that into my sisterhood there's no such thing as perfection I strive for progress every day one step forward maybe two back but then one step again forward we go so that's a little bit about that kindness can and the kindness workshop uh, workshops for more information and please if you're needing any love soothing encouragement motivation kindnesscan.co.za. Paul and I throw a lot of love and energy into a lot of free content. We have must have over 100 podcasts um, from people all over the world um, that are just doing kind things. So go and check that out. Right. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to a lady that I only met yesterday, but I feel like we vibe and we could be friends forever and a day. Uh, Cecilia Reinecke, who is actually the principal and co-founder of Cambry Learn. Uh, she loves a good coffee, and that's why I know we vibe, doll, because I love a good coffee. Um, Agatha Christie novels is also something that she loves. Funny cat videos, that made me laugh, because I also dig a funny pet video <laughs> and fitness. Uh, Cecilia started Cambry Learn uh, to impact uh, positively on students from around the world, Uh, She got a BCom and an LLB, completed her articles, uh, only to realize that her passion was actually in teaching. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a virtual round of applause for Cecilia. Welcome. Thank you so much, Jane, for the warm introduction. It was very nice to learn about you as well. Very interesting to hear about your kids. And that speaks very much to exactly what what we stand for at Cambry Learn. I mean, We stand for a personalized learning journey for each of our students, and we offer flexibility, which allows us to cater our program to suit the needs of each individual. And it's so amazing to to compare what we have today, you know, to to compare it to what it was like when we were at school, where there was such a traditional approach. Everybody starts grade one together. You move along together. At the end of the year, you write your tests or your exams together. You fail one subject, you fail the whole grade. Mm. Can we learn is completely different. So we are, our entire journey, as I said, is completely personalized. We allow students to enroll with us at any time during the year. So we've got kids that sign up in January. We've got kids who sign up in June. And they can work at their own, at their own pace, which is unheard of if you think about how I'm sure most of us watching today experience school. The beauty as well is you've got kids who, are, who maybe excel at a subject like mathematics. We allow kids like that to progress to the next level. And if they're struggling with a subject like, like English, for example, they can repeat their English. So it's not, again, like the traditional pro- approach where you move from one grade to the next grade. 
the, um, the British curriculum, which is what we're offering at the moment. Um, later on, I will be chatting about the fact that we'll be introducing CAPS, which is the South African curriculum in 2022. Um, but right now we offer the British curriculum and the British curriculum itself allows for flexibility. So when learners get to the, the GCSE levels, the ASNA levels, they can write the interview exams in May, June, or in October, November, or they can split the exams. They can write some of the exams in May, June, and some of them in October, November. This is, of course, where our education consultants come in, because each of the parents that are interested in signing up with us would meet with our education consultants, who would then explain the whole process. There are obviously boundaries, as there are with everything, but um, the flexibility is there. And another a wonderful thing about this curriculum and our system is that if a child doesn't do well, they can rewrite the exam, which is, again, I mean, I think back to when we were in matric, I, I still have nightmares about my matric exam, my, my math exam, because I know if I failed that exam, it's over. Mm -hmm. Whereas here, it's so different. And it's just so amazing to see how learners are able to, um, to, to focus on, on their strengths. The, the curriculum as well allows kids to specialize in subjects that they're interested in, which is another thing that um, just supports the flexibility of our program. Furthermore, in terms of our teachers, I'm very proud to, to chat about our teachers and the fact that our teachers are highly experienced. They are professional. A lot of them have got many years experience creating content and engaging with students in traditional classrooms. So our teachers accommodate our learners. And as each of our learners are on an individual path, our teachers are there to su support them on that individual um, path. So as the students go through their assignments, their tests, their exams, and submit them, the teachers are available to provide formative feedback. We take a lot of pride in the feedback we provide in our tests, our assignments, because this is a very important or critical part of the learning process. A lot of students need time to to really internalize all the, the feedback from the teachers. And we, we really go the extra mile to give detailed feedback, which helps the learner um, improve their whole uh, learning experience and ultimately become a better learner. Um, in terms, furthermore, in terms of our teachers, we have our own learning content, which is part of our program. So we offer assignments, we offer uh, live lessons, we offer question and answer sessions which are interactive and all of these are conducted by our teachers so um, the interactive part of the, the question and answer sessions is obviously great for for socializing for the learners as well because as you can imagine a lot of learners who do opt for online schooling do feel quite isolated so we work in quite a bit to um to, to improve that for students and to try and encourage as much group group work as possible um, all our learning content has been de uh, developed by our teachers. And the purpose of our learning content is to bridge the gap between the endorsed textbooks or the prescribed textbooks. So we do have prescribed textbooks from grade one right up until full A level. But then we have our learning content, which has gone through a very strict uh, quality assurance process and editing process. And the purpose is for the teacher to take the knowledge that they've acquired over the years, a lot of it coming from classroom experience, and to put that down on paper. And to just break these huge textbooks. I mean, I'm sure everybody remembers some of the textbooks from high school. I mean, I feel as though they're even worse now. I mean, one of my um, A-level business studies textbooks is about this thick. So we take that and we break it down into digestible chunks for the learner, just to make the whole learning process easier for them. And then, of course, we use our, our content as well to give them a lot of exam, exam tips and um, um, any advice on skills that they need in order to achieve success in our program and ultimately in their, their final exams. In terms of our content, um, saying that our content is dynamic, what we mean by that is our content is constantly being updated. The syllabus, which we are currently offering, which is the International British uh, Cambridge syllabus, is constantly being revised. Textbooks are constantly being revised. So we ensure that our content is up to date with the latest syllabus changes. 
And we have a, a, a lovely rating system on our learning platform. Um, Joshua, one of our education consultants, will introduce you to our learning platform um, in, in a bit. Um, and we've got a lovely rating system where students are able to rate us. And they're actually able to rate our learning content. They're able to rate our live lessons, our question and answer sessions. And we use all of this information to continuously improve. We really stand for continuous improvement at Cambridge Learn. And that's why all the data we have on our system as well is used by us to continuously improve not only the learning platform, but also the teaching experience for students. In terms of our learning platform, each of our learners do have a unique login. Parents are able to log into our learning uh, platform as well, and they're able to monitor the learner's progress, which is, of course, something that's extremely important in online schooling. All the data is saved on our system. And as I mentioned earlier, that data is used to drive continuous improvement in, um, in our business, in terms of the platform and in terms of our uh, teaching. So in terms of offering a full homeschooling solution, Cambry Learn offers two packages, which you can um, chat to our education consultants about as well. But just to give you a brief overview of the packages, we have one of our packages, which is our premium package. That offers a full homeschooling solution to learners who don't want to attend a traditional school for whatever reason. We have students who are sportsmen, who are professional musicians, who are traveling the world with their family. A lot of our students as well maybe have medical conditions. They cannot attend bricks and mortar schools. So our system is perfect for those students because their lifestyle, they can achieve academic success and they can continue with their lifestyle as it suits them. So that's our full homeschooling solution, which will give you access to our, to our teachers, our interactive live lessons, our, in, um, our recorded live lessons, our content. And then we also have a supplementary solution for students who are registered at uh, British schools already and are just looking for an additional support tool to help them improve their marks. And perhaps another thing, we offer quite a variety of subjects. A good example is a subject like accounting. A lot of British schools don't offer accounting. So we have a lot of students who are doing the majority of their subjects at a traditional school. And then they do one or two subjects with us. So again, that just speaks to the flexibility and how we really do cater to suit um, your specific needs. Then I want to look at our um, mock exams. So mock exams are very much what the traditional trial exams in South Africa that I think many of us who went to school 10, 20, 30 years ago, we had trial exams. We call them mock exams and they emulate the final exam that the students write at an independent exam center. And then they get the accreditation directly from Cambridge. So that's just something important to note. All our students in the end, when they finally matriculate, they get a certificate from the University of Cambridge. So it's the same accreditation you would get if you went to a top bricks and mortar school. So our mock exams, as I said, emulate those exams. So we, the students have to write those in a very um, strict manner. They've got to be monitored by their parents or by a guardian. And then we provide them with the same feedback and the same quality of marking and strictness of marking that Cambridge does so that the students are fully prepared to take that independent exam. And that's, again, where I reiterate that our teachers are highly experienced. They are professionally trained. They have gone on the necessary training to equip them to mark according to the Cambridge standards. So um, your, your students are in safe hands with us. We actually we have quite a strict um, uh, recruitment process for our teachers. And a lot of them have been headhunted. We tend to, we like to headhunt the teachers who have achieved very good grades and who just have a way of um, engaging with the students and creating a love and excitement for their subject amongst the students. 
Um, then I get, I just want to make sure I've got, a, I've just got a few bullet points here just to make sure I'm not missing anything because I could talk forever <laughs> about this topic. Um, then I suppose I can talk about some of the exciting things to come in 2022. So, yes, Jane. I've got a question. So, yes. During COVID, homeschooling nearly broke me personally because I'm not the greatest teacher. So listening from a parent's ear, I mean, I'm loving everything that I'm hearing. I'm loving the flexibility. Now explain to me, the, the, a normal school day, how would that roll on? Would the child go online and would a teacher take them through like what would be deemed a normal school day subject by subject? I mean, how does, how does it roll out from a practical point of view? Okay, so it would depend firstly on the grade, but ultimately what would happen is the learner would start their day. So they'd start their day at 8 a.m., whatever. Mm -hmm. They would have a calendar. So they log into their platform, which Joshua is going to show you, take you mm -hmm. through a bit later. And they'll have their calendar. On their calendar, they'll see which lessons have been scheduled for the day. Mm -hmm. And they'll have what we call a this week document. That's a planning tool. So every single subject will have a this week document specifying exactly what has to be done that week. So they are set up. They've also got term planners. They've got a proper course outline at the beginning of the year. So these students start their first day at school and they know the entire course, what it's going to consist of. And I mean, for anybody that's a control freak like myself, that is perfect because I now know I can work ahead. And the whole flipped classroom approach, I mean, that's where that whole flipped classroom approach also comes in, where you can go, and if you know that the, there's going to be a live lesson or a question and answer session, and it's going to be about a specific topic, you can go ahead and you can read up on that topic, you can go through the notes, you can do the multiple choice questions or whichever activities or resources we have. So um, it would also depend, of course, on the number of subjects you take, but mm -hmm. it's, um, um, it, it, it's pretty, it's set up, but it's flexible. And I'll tell you where the flexibility also comes in is with our live lessons because our live lessons are recorded. So if you miss the live lesson because you're horse riding or you're on holiday or whatever, you can watch it afterwards. Mm. And our teachers are available. So you can reach out to our teachers. And if you don't understand the teachers via a message that they sent to you, they can create a little video for you. They can refer you to online resources they can take you through the topic in the question and answer session. And the beauty of all of this is that it's recorded on our platform. So if you as a parent comes, comes to, to me and says, you know, Cecilia, I feel as though your teacher maybe isn't providing enough support. Everything's on the system. You know, so for security purposes nowadays with online, with online education, learners being online, it's very important that we, you know, that, that we're very aware of that as well. I can only assume that since COVID, you've seen numbers just mushroom because I personally know from parents that I've spoken to in my circles that I hang out in, um, a lot of mums and dads have chosen to keep their kids at home and 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 go through a homeschooling type of project uh, program. How much um, parental uh, input uh, is needed uh, with Cambrian Learn? So at the lower levels, the children are going to need a guardian or to a tutor, a guardian slash mm -hmm. teacher at home to assist them. So our lower grade material is directed at parents or at equipping somebody who is not a teacher mm -hmm. to teach their child. I'm, I can teach high school. I can't teach a grade one child. But when I go through our content, I've got a very, very good idea of exactly what is expected. So that's how our program is laid out. At the higher levels, the learners be generally become very independent generally from about grade seven but of course it depends on you know from learner to learner very cool this this is exciting and speaking about exciting things let's talk about exciting things to come sure so one of the things is we are going to be adding some additional subjects so we're going to be an example is AS geography a lot of our our um, students and parents have asked for AS geography we're also going to be adding a level business and then we're also going to be adding robotics. I'm very excited about our robotics course because it's actually, it's going to have a physical component to it as well, where all the learners are going to get a micro bit. Um, for all the parents who know what a micro bit is, good for you. I never knew what a micro bit was, but I'm extremely <laughs> excited uh, about this, um, this robotics course of ours. Um, and then we're going to be adding uh, social emotional learning, which is something that I think is lacking in a lot of schools. And this is an introduction to self-awareness and emotional intelligence. 
So this is going to teach learners the skills they need to cope in real life and in the to be successful in today's in today's workforce. And um, they're going to be learning about things like their own emotions, their character strengths. They're going to be get, engaging in discussions with other learners. Um, and something else um, that is so exciting about this course is that all our teachers are going to be undergoing the training so that they can incorporate this in their teaching across the, bro across the board, which is something that I know our CEO feels um, very, very strongly about. So, so we're very excited about that. And then we've also got a lot of, um, it feels as though I, I could carry on with this. I'm, I'm going to stop with, with, I'm going to tell you guys two more. We also am um, bringing in a, a massive active learning component into all our content, which just means that our content is going to become a lot more fun and engaging, especially for the lower levels. And then lastly, our very big project is we're launching the CAPS curriculum which is the South African curriculum. We're going to be launching this curriculum on steroids and we are going live with this on the um, 17th of January, 2022. We're starting with grade one right up to grade nine. So that takes me to the end. I hope I um, behaved and, and didn't go over time. And, and I will now hand over to Joshua, one of our education consultants, and he's going to take us um, through an introduction of our online learning platform. Thank you so much, Thank Cecilia. You much. Thank you, my darling. How's it, Josh? My name is Josh. I'm an education consultant with Cambridge Learning. I'm here to help you with any of your virtual homeschooling related inquiries. The assumption a lot of people that I chat to tend to make is that all this is, it's a student sitting in front of a screen for eight hours a day watching teachers give lessons. But that's not actually how it works. And that's not how it should work. How it works is we would provide the student with different resources to be able to homeschool. So you'll see on the platform how intuitive it is. You'll see, obviously, they would start in their week one, they would click on week one, and they would see all of their lessons lined up for that week. A typical lesson will include Firstly, as a type of resource, the notes that come in the system. For the younger students in primary school, they would get the equivalents of the notes, which are referred to as worksheets. So here's an example of the worksheets. Okay? The students will use a combination of the worksheets, the notes in the system, as well as the related video lessons. They are on-demand lessons, they're pre-recorded lessons, which means that the student can access these at absolutely any time that they're ready to access them. So because they're pre-recorded, the student can fast forward, maybe they miss something and need to listen to that part of the lesson again, they can rewind. Essentially, the student could watch or re-watch these lessons as many times as they wanted or needed to until they've understood that lesson, and then they can move on to the next lesson. Now, the students also get what we call continuous assessment throughout the year. So you'll notice here that every few weeks, and this changes um, from grade to grade, subject to subject, but you'll get a general idea. The student will get continuous assessment in the form of assessments throughout the year, mid-year tests. At the end of the level, they'll get their examination, their final examination. Now, how all of these work, they all contribute towards the student's final mark. Now, there's no set date or time to complete the assignments, tests, or exams. As long as they completed within the 12 months that you have access to the platform, they downloaded off the platform, you guys will print them out, the students will handwrite the answers. Once they're done, they will scan a copy back onto the system. Our teachers will take care of the rest. They'll mark it for you guys, and they'll provide you with feedback. Now, in addition to this, you're also getting what we call extra lessons. Now, in the system, they're called recorded live lessons, but I like to call them or think of them as extra lessons. So think of this as a database, as a library that contains every single extra lesson we've ever recorded. So how it works is the student can type in any word, any term, any concept, any topic that they're currently working on that they're not understanding, that they need extra help, extra resources or extra lessons for. All you have to do is type in that word into the search bar. And what the system will do is it's going to pick up every single past paper with questions relating to that specific term, as well as every single extra lesson that we've ever containing the specific term that you've now typed in. So now the student is getting extra lessons on demand. Now, if you wanted to, you could watch all of these lessons live, 
okay? They, they do happen once a week per subject live. It's happening in real time in a virtual classroom environment. Even if you don't make that live lesson, don't worry about it because we record every single live lesson that we ever do and this will all be available to you in our database. Now, the important thing for you guys to realize or to see here is that you'll notice if we scroll to the bottom that for the older grades it will be a 34 week curriculum for the younger grades it will be a 30 week curriculum so let's call that six seven or eight months whether it's 30 or 34 weeks but remember the student has 12 months of access to all of this so already you can see that there's a lot of time for the student to go through this um, the students can take breaks when they want to take breaks um, they can work at their own pace you guys can go on a family holiday if you want to go on a family holiday, none of that would disrupt the student's schooling. And the reason why we do it this way, or how we do it this way, is because it's what they call flexible and self-paced learning. So what that means and what that looks like is ultimately the student will work at a pace that's comfortable to them. So obviously you will start in your week one, whenever that happens to be, and we'll always give you a general guideline how to approach the curriculum. It's completely flexible and self-paced learning, which means the students ultimately should work at a pace that is comfortable to them. Unlike in a traditional schooling environment where 20 or 30 or however many students are grouped together and the teacher, I guess, kind of has to assume that everyone works at the same pace, we know in reality it doesn't work like that. What tends to happen in these type of environments is there'll be a group of students that's far ahead of where the rest of the class is and these students will be bored. They're waiting for everyone to catch up. On the other side of the equation, there'll be students that don't understand the work that the teacher's working on right now, and they're forced to do this work even though they don't have that foundational knowledge in order to do the work that they're meant to be doing. At the end of the day, as long as the student gets through the entire 30 or 34 week curriculum within those 12 months, whether it takes them six weeks, six months, or the full 12 months, they're good to go at, at their own pace. Thanks so much for your time, guys. It was really great um, being able to communicate all of this with you. And please understand that I'm just a question away if there are any outstanding questions. Thank you, Josh. Thank you so much. I must say, I just, I get so excited about this um, because, you know, a lot of the facilitation that I'm doing in schools at the moment, um, there's just so much overwhelm, um, anxiety, uh, depression. And when I, I look at this model, I just, it just makes so much sense to me you know, to learn in an environment at your own pace. If you have missed something, you can go back. Just so many ticks. I just love it. And having a look at how many people are online with us this evening, it just is so exciting um, that these type of opportunities exist. But let's hear from some of the students. To give you some insight about it, Cambry Learn is a very organized online school platform that prepares students for exams and teaches them to be structured, hardworking and responsible. It also equipped me with very, very professional teachers who can guide me through my courses and advise me on where to improve and focus on. I just love Cambry Learn because it has made my life as a grade 12 student so much easier and prepared. I am very impressed with the way Cambry Learn functions as it is so easy to access and has everything that I need. And they make things very simple, they're straightforward and many you, you don't want to, you know, every time you get up you're very excited of what your teacher has to teach you online. And it's such been an amazing journey. And I, you know what, I wanna tell everybody, this is the best way that you can learn for your child. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Zion Pillay, and I'm a Cambly Learn student. I love science, it is interesting, and I get to do lots of experiments. English, I get to write my own stories. The last story I wrote was called Hannah the Hen. I get to learn at my own pace, some days I go two hours, some days it's three. Along with the well detailed written course and pre recorded lessons, there's a tightly packed schedule filled with QAs and live lessons by an amazing group of teachers who are more than willing to help with any questions you may have and actively encourage their students to participate. And I also enjoyed that I can work at my own pace and I can choose my own schedule. And that's why I highly recommend and absolutely love my online learning platform, Cambridge. I mean, honestly, is there anything more exciting than seeing young people enthusiastic about learning, right? Very, very cool. Very cool. So it's now my absolute pleasure uh, to introduce you uh, to Dr. Jose Rivera, uh, Vice President of International Strategy and Development. Uh, Cogna is the largest community of the education professionals in the world, a nonprofit 
nonpartisan organization that conducts a rigorous on-site external reviews of school, uh, schools and school systems to ensure that all le learners uh, realize their full potential. Dr. Jose, welcome to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And first of all, please allow me to share my best wishes of, of health and well-being for you all, your families and loved ones, and to the organizers uh, of this event. Thank you for the invitation. It is my pleasure to be here. And uh, yes, I am Dr. Jose Rivera. I am the Vice President of International Strategy and Development for Cognia. And uh, Cognia is the represent the unification of the accreditation policies, standards, and procedures of the three largest accreditation divisions in the world, NCA, NWEC, and SACS. Um, that represent, represents the um, accreditation of 90% of all the accreditation institutions in the United States and more than 70% of all the accredited institutions in the world. So um, we actually work with institutions in 89 countries and we serve more than 36,000 institutions reaching out to more than 5 million teachers and educators and leaders and 125 uh, million students in the world. What is it that we do? We, we help institutions to develop the internal capacity to provide quality education and to focus on improvement that can be impacting and sustainable for providing opportunities to learners. We serve as a trusted partner for advancing, advancing learning um, for um, um, students all over the world. And we do it so with uh, public and private institutions, with uh, systems, corporations, early learning, digital learning institutions, STEM uh, providers, and education service agencies. Um, we have been uh, doing so for over 125 years so far, providing accreditation and certification services assessment and improvement solutions and services for uh, increasing and enhancing uh, capacity and quality in education. And uh, we are all about uh, supporting institutions to develop that internal capacity to provide quality assurance process for the institutions so that that will translate into uh, delivery systems that are uh, high quality and it can perform according to the uh, international benchmarks that are uh, the uh, gold standards of the educational setting in the international realm. Now, we help institutions to develop an assessment, a readiness assessment of their internal capacity for building that foundation for quality in education. We help institutions to uh, uh, reflect upon best practices in terms of the know-how, the staffing, the training provided to the staff, the resources, and all the elements from the leadership, learning, and resource manage management capacity domain to provide quality education services in a sustainable way. Um, think about it. Let us let us reflect a little bit on the trends that are driving, that are galvanizing quality in education right now. And let us then think, reflect for a while on the factors that will drive change in education in the next 10 years. How can we say for sure? How can we tell that we'll be up to the task, providing high quality education, providing for the needs of the students of the new generation? We are talking here about digital learning, multiculturalism, artificial intelligence, citizenship, literacy, augmented reality, 
automation, robotics, coding, brain-based learning, gamification, adaptive learning algorithms. How is it that we can tell for sure? How is it that an education institution can tell that will be up to the task to perform with quality and excellence and provide the students with what they really need to develop those skills? Well, they follow a strict process that includes a rigorous review according to updated international standards. Cognitive performance standards are the heart of the continuous improvement process in accreditation. We have a research-based performance standards matrix that provide the framework to achieve measurable and meaningful improvement for impacting student lives. They define the specific characteristic of a good education institution that provide also the guidelines for the efforts that will be providing the students with the tools for visibly growing as learners and also to the institutions to empower teachers, leaders, and to impact organizational effectiveness. It is my pleasure today to publicly and officially announce to the community authorities that Cambry Learn actually went through the Cochnia rigorous accreditation process and it found to be in compliance with all of our accreditations. And I have to say so also with flying colors. So Cambry Learn is an international accredited institution, a fully international accredited institution which means that the academic program that is being implemented, the curriculum offerings, transcripts, and diplomas are backed up by the seal of accreditation of the NCA, NWC, and SACS accreditation divisions and the Global Accreditation Commission. So congratulations and thank you for having me. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Jose. Thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Right, it is now my absolute pleasure uh, to introduce you to Brett Garner. Uh, Brett is uh, the Deputy Principal uh, and we're gonna talk about uh, the introduction of CAPS, uh, CAPS versus uh, the International British Curriculum and how to decide which curriculum works. How's it, Brett? I'm well, thank you, and yourself, Jane. Thank you yeah, so much for good, thank you. having me here this evening. And uh, thank Fantastic. you to, to the many folks who have um, logged in to, to enjoy our virtual open day. I, I'm a little bit more accustomed, having been in South African education for about 25 odd years, to having these sorts of things followed by tea. And I'll, I'll be honest, I, I'm missing the prospect of having a face-to-face -face <laughs> chat with a handful of people about tea, uh, uh, over a cup of tea. But um, yeah, perhaps we can do it virtually. Uh, you're more than welcome, I'm sure, to uh, keep peppering the Q&A with, with lots and lots of questions. And um, of course, Cecilia's mentioned this, Josh mentioned this, the education consultants are always around. They're always on standby. They're always ready to answer questions. So please folks, do, um, do, do let them have it. Um, I've got three things to say this evening and I've been given a handful of time. And my colleagues have all taken bets this evening on on how long it's going to take me to say it, so I better get to it. Uh, I want to look at three things. Essentially, I want to look at why did Cambridge learn uh, the very well established and successful international British curriculum service provider introduced CAPS, which is not British international curriculum, and um, why why are the two different? What is different between CAPS and international British curriculum? And then finally, for parents who are looking to to decide, you know, which curriculum should they let their children uh, study study or follow. Um, what are the benefits? I'm going to try and answer that. I don't have a lot of time, and generally I need a lot of time for most things. Um, so I do want to encourage you, if there are unanswered questions, please ask them. We are very, very happy to follow up. And I think the more information you can take away from tonight, uh, the better your follow-up questions will be. We're expecting questions and we welcome them. So first of all, let's talk about why did Cambridge introduce CAPS? Look, Cambridge is really well known. Uh, because we are a tried and tested platform. We've had tremendous success with the international British curriculum. And, and the, 
the biggest part of our success is that students who start with us generally will follow all the way through to the typical Cambridge exam exit points. IGCSE, that's about the grade, a grade 11 equivalent, um, AS level, which in South African context is matric, and then A level, post matric year 13 level. Um, we do that really well, and we've been doing that really well for quite a while. Long before the pandemic, we were doing this well. When the pandemic struck, there were many education institutions, whether online or in bricks and mortar environments, who, who, who really battled to keep things going. Cambrian didn't. And I think it's one of the testimonies to the, the structure and the infrastructure that was built up by the likes of Cecilia and our CEO, who we'll hear from just now. Um, it, it's, it's, it has stood the test of time, despite the fact that it's not been here for as long as, well, the likes, I guess, of Cambridge or Britain itself. Um, so, so why then, if it wasn't broken, did we decide to fix it? Hey, if it's, uh, yeah, why fix what isn't broken? Well, the truth is we didn't. Um, we simply decided to add choice predictability, uh, additional value, and to do that for a local audience that is desperately in need of a dynamic but reliable South African curriculum solution. South African parents pleaded with us to give them caps, and that's exactly what we've done. So as Cecilia has mentioned, January 2022, we'll welcome our first cohort of students uh, from grade one all the way through to grade nine, and they'll follow the South African national curriculum. The vast majority of these students will probably have as their, uh, or have their collective eye on the matric certificate, the South African matric certificate as their end point, as their Cambrian Learn journey end point. But alongside those students, we will still continue to have a very big student population following the international British curriculum. Um, and I haven't been asked to say this, but I'm gonna muddy the waters slightly tonight by saying in due course, we're going to have additional students following additional inter international curricula as well. But first things first, uh, and let me stick to my brief. What's the difference between CAPS and the British curriculum? Look, by definition, uh, a curriculum is simply a prescription of academic content that needs to be covered. So anyone really can, can pull up a, a curriculum. Uh, and it stands to reason that the person or the people who put together, who curate a curriculum and who curate that content will do so with particular aim in mind. So personal bias, national bias, whatever it might be, is going to influence that curriculum. So I quickly went onto the South African Department of Basic Education's website, and I've pulled this quote, which I'm going to read. It says, the national curriculum statement, so that's South Africa's national curriculum statement, gives expression to the knowledge, the skills, and the values worth learning in South African schools. This curriculum aims to ensure that children acquire and apply knowledge and skills in ways that are meaningful to their own lives. In this regard, the curriculum promotes knowledge in local contexts, that's a difficult word to say on the webinar, while being sensitive to global imperatives." End of quote. The British or the international British curriculum, by contrast, and I've taken this from Pearson, the Edexcel people, they say, the British curriculum is globally recognized by more than 160 countries as a high quality, modern world curriculum with proven heritage. Those two are rather different. Besides the very obvious difference in the lengths of the two descriptions, CAPS is clearly South African. It's made for South Africa. While the British curriculum has a decidedly global perspective. There are other differences too. And Jane, if you want to step in at any stage and stop me, I realize that I in typical teacher fashion, may just rattle off at pace. So feel free to interrupt me. I, I do like questions. It's one of the reasons I love being a teacher. The other differences, um, maybe before I get there, I, I should explain this term CAPS. In, in South Africa, we tend to talk about the curriculum as CAPS. It, it's not really. The, the South African national curriculum is just that. There's a national curriculum. CAPS defines the curriculum as well as the assessments that we would use to, to vouch for the validity of the learning that's taken place. But by and large in South Africa, we tend to use CAPS to mean the curriculum. So I'm just gonna stick with that so that we don't um, trip ourselves up. Um, so let's just quickly have a look. I said, um, uh, what's, what are the differences between CAPS and the British curriculum? Other than the fact that it's a very long definition for one and a shorter one for the other, and one is very South African and one is more global. Um, CAPS is prescriptive. It's certainly more prescriptive 
than the international br British curriculum is. Depending on your child's grade, he or she is going to need to complete all the prescribed subjects, whereas Cambrian's British curriculum offering gives you a heck of a lot more freedom. Cecilia mentioned that, you know, most of us who've grown up or been schooled in South Africa in the past would have come through a grade-based environment. We needed to pass everything, or at the moment, certainly a combination of most things, before we, we, we could uh, move on. If we didn't, we repeated everything. Using Cambridge's British curriculum offering, you could do just one subject, if that's what you chose. And if, for example, you're doing maths and English, and your English was great and your maths perhaps not so much, and you passed English, you got above 60% and you moved on to the next grade level, but you didn't quite make the grade for maths, you could repeat maths, but keep going with English. So that's a very, very big difference between the two. The other thing about CAPS is that um, there's a lot of content. There are a lot of subjects that need to be covered, particularly as students get older, uh, the higher up in the program they go. So what tends to happen in CAPS is that students get a very broad exposure to many subjects, which is an entirely good thing. Whereas on our British curriculum offering, because students can take far fewer subjects, they get a relatively narrow academic focus that is, is oftentimes quite academically demanding, simply because you're doing less but going deeper. So that's a very important difference. Um, some people see one as a positive and one as a negative. I don't, they're simply different. I think let's have a look at, um, the, the other important thing is that the CAPS offering is, is essentially based on a year's worth of program. So essentially a student would start at a particular time in the year, work through a particular program and towards the end of the year or at the end of the year, they would go through some sort of final assessment and they would receive uh, a report or a grade or they would progress to the next level. Um, it's relatively prescriptive in the sense that Students have to do a number of assessments, sometimes in a particular order, and sometimes at a particular time or within a particular time frame, And that makes it a little less flexible than say our British curriculum offering, where students can race ahead if they want to. If they have the ability to, to complete more than a year, more than one academic year in, in a calendar year, then they're welcome to do that. They could do two if they really wanted to. By the same token, if they felt that they weren't mastering something, they can take longer than a year to complete something. So that's very flexible in our offering of the British curriculum. But in the CAPS curriculum, we don't have quite the same luxury. And it's simply because the national curriculum has defined by slightly more um, rigorous and rigid constraints. Having said that, in our platform, students will have a lot more freedom to move than they might be used to in a mainstream schooling environment. One of the big complications with CAPS, with the large amount of work that needs to be covered, is that, that students' sort of day-to-day -day school activities tend to impact on what happens in the classroom, on the academic time. With a Cambridge Learn platform, that's, that's not an issue. So where a student needs a bit of extra time or wants to move a little bit ahead, they're more than capable of doing that. If there is opportunity for them to go into extension mode and do additional worksheets or do additional work, or go and have a look at something that's related but not necessarily defined in the curriculum, they're going to be able to do that. It's not like a mainstream class where everyone has to be on the same page at the same time. And those who work ahead, well, they tend to be forgotten because they don't need much attention. And those who fall behind, well, they have to attend extra lessons. Um, I think parents in particular will be very surprised by the flexibility our CAPS program is gonna offer. And my prediction is that other service providers are gonna sit up and take notice. Um, in fact, maybe on that note, the, the rigidity of times, we won't close our enrollment Eat, on Chris. the 16th of October. We, um, we, we'll be here on the 16th of October, so should you need to find a service provider on the 16th, please reach out to us. Uh, if you're not sure what I'm referring to, I'm sure you'll Google straight after the session and you'll know exactly what I mean. Um, I think maybe it's important also just to note that there are some things that are not terribly different between CAPS and the British curriculum. The most important for me is that both of these curricula have academic merit. CAPS is a very good curriculum, despite what many people would like you to believe about CAPS. The British curriculum is demanding, and so is the CAPS curriculum. If it's done in the right way, in the right environment, you can get massive value out of CAPS. 
I've already said it, but I'll say it again. In a traditional schooling environment, with the many constraints placed on students, it's difficult to extract maximum value out of CAPS. And so for many teachers, it becomes a little bit of a checkbox exercise as we try to get through the assessments, we try to get through the various things that have to be done, and we don't get enough time to get the, ch the children fully engaged with the content or excited about learning. The Cambrian platform is going to turn that on its head. Uh, so I guess the next uh, point to, to ask is, which curriculum should you choose? I'm going to say this right at the outset. It doesn't matter which one you choose. You're going to get great value from Cambrian Learn. If you use our platform for CAPS or for the International British Curriculum, you won't have made a mistake. Um, but I think in general, my advice to parents is to say, what are you looking for for the next phase of your child's uh, educational program or journey? And then work backwards from there. So if you are a, a, a South African uh, a parent or a parent with South African children, and your intention is to reintegrate to a mainstream schooling environment. You know, you might be moving, you might be in a different country for a short period, uh, you might be waiting for something to open up, then, then choosing the South African curriculum or CAPS on the Cambrian Learn platform makes the most sense. It means your child is going to transition from one platform to a different platform without having too many distractions because of the content of the material. If you did choose Cambridge, oh, sorry, uh, if you did choose Cambridge Learn British Curriculum, you certainly would have academic uh, value in that program. You certainly would be academically capable in whichever CAPS classroom you find yourself, but you might not be on the same page as everyone else in the class because you might not have, well, you might not know that uh, traditional indigent huts are built with uh, wooden uh, um, branches that are folded and then covered with mats, you know, that sort of thing. Um, the other thing that I think is important is if, you, if you're looking to choose fewer subjects and you want to be able to do this at different grade levels, your child might really, really love English and be streets ahead of everyone else, and you might really want to focus on that, then our British curriculum offering is the only choice because it allows you complete freedom to build something that makes academic sense. Uh, I want to just caution and say, you know, you may arrive at Cambridge Learn and say, my child is very good at maths. I'd like him to do um, A-level maths while he completes his grade six or stage six English. There's a good chance the educational consultant's going to tell you that that's not terribly wise, but there is a lot of freedom. So when your child does battle with English and gets stuck, there's no reason for them not to keep going with maths and science because they may very well be capable there and need one or two things to be looked at in the English. Um, if you want security and the predictability that... Um, Having all the bases covered uh, brings you, if you want something that's prescribed and relatively rigid, then I strongly encourage CAPS. And I, and I don't make that as a flippant statement. There is tremendous security in knowing exactly what's expected of you. Whereas the international British curriculum gives a lot of freedom. And that freedom for us as parents can sometimes be a little bit debilitating because, you know, as some of our parents discover, our students love the, the, the academic material. So they race ahead in English. And before long, they've, they've sat through their day's lessons uh, in the space of three or four hours. Now, what do you do with them? Whereas with CAPS, there's, there's quite a lot of work to get through. There's quite a lot of material to get through. And that process is a bit more time consuming than doing two or three or four subjects on the British curriculum. Um, if you're looking for an international school leaving certificate or certification, that's going to get you into university in London or Sydney or New York then the British curriculum Cambridge certificated uh, exam results are going to be your international calling card. Um, there's no two ways around the fact that A levels uh, is known wherever you go. If you decide to rather stay in SA, if you're destined for WITS, which is my alma mater, or you're going to UCT, then the journey to a South African matric certificate, uh, the NSC, is arguably less taxing. And it also allows you to compete fairly on equal footing with a vast majority of South Africans. So there's merit in either. There is no mistake with either. It's something that you can certainly choose with your eyes open and whichever decision you make, you won't have made a mistake. However, if you're looking for something overseas, please, please just be aware, A-levels carry a lot more weight than our South African NEC, whether you've done that through a state uh, school or through an, uh, an IEB or private school. I need to close. Um, I, I want to just highlight one or two things. The, the first is 
we love students having a look at what it is that we're up to. So if a student, if you as parents would like your children to have a look at the curriculum, whether our British international curriculum or our CAPS curriculum, then please simply reach out to an education consultant and we'll happily give you time on the platform. There's no education panacea. There's no silver bullet when it comes to teaching children. Cambrian may not be the right answer for you. It might be the wrong fit for your child. Um, sign up, have some trial access, take a good look at what it is that we do and how we do it, and then make an informed decision. I'm very confident uh, that the vast majority of the folks who tonight are watching this, who, who sign up and go through the trial process, will end up signing up and staying with us for the long run. We have thousands of enrolled students all over the world who, like many of you, started and couldn't stop. They've stayed with us. They've become part of our Cambry Learn family. And yeah, look, it drives us. We're super excited about it. We're super excited about the, the daily interaction with our students, whether it's in the background or in the classroom. And um, I can't wait to, to welcome many, many of you onto our platform, whether it's the International British Curriculum or CAPS. Thanks, Jane. Thank you so very much, Brett. Yeah, one thing is really evident, um, and that's the passion uh, in this team, which is really, yeah, it's it's inspiring, um, especially when it comes to education. I mean, I remember being in school and being so traumatized by the pressure of having to choose my subjects. I mean, it was such a big deal. Um, and this just really feels like a really kind and nurturing environment to get uh, the best out of out of learning, you know. And, I, you know, I, I really do believe that when you have fun and you, you're engaged um, that's when the real, you know, that's when the real magic happens. Right. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to um, our CEO, Claudia Swatsberg. Uh, she's got a couple of words for us. How's it? Hi, everybody. I'm Claudia Swartzberg, co-founder and CEO of Top Dog Education. And this is a Cambry Learn student. When you think about your child and what you want them to achieve, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Well, I can tell you that traditional schooling looks at achievement in terms of test scores in a very limited number of academic areas. Now, the problem with that is it doesn't take into account problem solving ability, motivation levels, perception of things, social intelligence. It also doesn't take into account the difference between dynamic and inert knowledge. Inert knowledge is information that you know how to express, but not necessarily use. At Cambry Learn, we focus on preparing students to reach their maximum success for the next 60 years of their lives. We are the leading global online learning school with over three and a half million learners in over 50 countries. We specialize in personalized education, and that's why our students are recognized by being top performers worldwide. Now, in the next few minutes, I'm going to show you why. I get asked all the time to mentor students. Now, let me tell you a little bit about myself. When I was five years old, the school that I was at didn't want to progress me to grade one because I couldn't cut straight. I still can't cut straight. My father wouldn't hear anything of it and put me straight into grade one. And I really was not a great performer. In fact, I was always that child. Throughout primary school, I started to get very anxious about school and I just believed I wasn't a great academic performer. In high school, I graduated top of my class. I went on to study actuarial science and specialized in data science. So you may ask, well, what was the turning point? Well, a father who refused to have an underwhelming child coming from a family of rocket scientists. So he spent his evenings with me, taking me through my work, creating practice material in a way that was relevant to me, i.e. personalized education. I had a mother whose main concern was my social and emotional intelligence. My grades started picking up and that feeling of success just became addictive. And my goals grew not only to wanting to perform, but wanting to be the best. I had a new sense of confidence and purpose. Now, true to my parents and going against the grade, I was told never to start a presentation with a graph. The very first thing I'm gonna do is start my presentation with a graph. Now, this graph looks boring, but it's the reason I get up in the morning. It doesn't mean anything. In fact, it's fake data. If we got this data studying any of your children, we would be thrilled because it means that there's clearly a trend going on here and all students are similar. The fact that there's one student above the curve, well, it's not a problem because I can just delete that student. It's just a measurement error. And we know it's a measurement error because it's messing up my data. 
Now, one of the first things we teach people in stats is how to eliminate the outliers so that we can find the line of best fit, which is fantastic if I'm trying to find out the average amount of sugar a person consumes. But if I'm interested in potential, true potential, we would be creating a cult for average. If I ask the question, how fast can a child learn to read in a classroom? Scientists change this question to how fast does the average child learn to read in a classroom? Now, if we study what's merely average, we are going to remain merely average. So instead of deleting those outliers, at Cambridge Learn, we study them. We deeply understand what makes each student perform and we nurture that. Now, this is what teaching in a non-personalized manner looks like. The red line represents where the teacher pitches the classroom at, leaving many well above it, meaning they've mastered the content, yet they're not being challenged, and many will fall below that line, meaning that they perhaps don't have the prerequisite knowledge or skills to understand the given lesson that is being presented to them. Now, traditional teaching approaches are set for the average learner. What we do at Cambridge Learn is provide an intelligence system that makes it possible for an educator or parent to teach individuals and not classes. Not only moving people above average, but moving the entire average up. What we've also found is that it's not reality that shapes learning, but the lens through which your brain views information that shapes your reality. In other words, your perspective. So what we do at Cambridge Learn is we optimize perspective through promoting social and emotional intelligence in every class that we teach. Let me show you what the situation looks like for a student that has focused on emotional intelligence. What has been found is that only 25% of your success is determined by IQ, which is crazy because most people think that the cleverer you are, the more successful you'll be in life but 75% of your success is determined by your perception, your optimism levels, your social support, and your ability to see stress as a challenge rather than as a threat. This is why at Cambridge Learn we focus so much on social and emotional intelligence. The absence of failing is not success. So in other words, if your child is getting good grades, it's not a guarantee of success. If you have the right perception, not only will your performance improve immediately, but you have given your child the best lifelong tool, resilience. Top Dog and Cambridge Learn achieve results through driving positive perception, self-regulation, and confidence in our students. I often get questions from parents. I'm sending my kids to the best schools in the country with the best teachers. How can they still not be doing well emotionally or academically? But embedded in that question is the key to understanding the science of learning. What the question assumes is that our external learning environment is predictive of our academic success. When in reality, 15% of your long-term academic success is determined by your external environment. 85% is determined by the way your brain processes information. Individualized learning and parent or mentor involvement are the two biggest factors that contribute to this. So some of you here today may currently be at traditional schools and the number one concern to move away from a physical school is the fear of less social interaction, a student being at home all day and no outdoor activities. So now let me bust that myth real quick. Our students have more time and energy to participate in a schedule that is flexible and more effective. We have top athletes studying with us the very reason why they study with Cambridge Learn is so that they can optimize their day. Also, not one of our sports stars did sports at school because they were not specialized enough at the schools. They needed more specialized sporting. Secondly, almost all of our students have social engagements and learning facilitation at our affiliate tutor centers and micro schools. Now you can find more about, about this from our education consultants. And lastly, to be a Cambridge Learn student provides a powerful global network of students to connect with. Just this year, we had a group of students who connected from all different locations around the world because they were all studying in the UK this year. An instant trusted support system. Not only that, you look at the skills that you need to give your children to be successful in the future. Well, have a look at what the World Economic Forum is saying. 
Just a few. You need some judgment and decision making, active learning, system evaluation, deductive reasoning, complex problem solving. Now, it's mentioning this because yes, our models, our artificial intelligence, automation is all getting more complex and better with time, more intelligent. It doesn't mean it's taking away jobs from people. It just means that they are going to be using people for more complex tasks, but for the more mundane administrative tasks, artificial intelligence will do those kind of tasks. So you need to promote that critical thinking, problem solving in order to be successful in life. As I've mentioned before, we are in over 50 countries with approximately three and a half million students. Now, one of the things I've also seen in life is that your network and your support system is a big determining factor for success. So that is why we promote socialization throughout our platform, connection and networking. You've got over three and a half million students to connect with in all locations around the world. And that to me is something that is unbelievable in terms of what online schooling and technology is allowing students to have when they come out of the schooling system. When I look at a product or service to see if I wanna engage, I always look at the people that are behind it because it's not only important what that product and service is offering, but people are everything. Do they have the right level of expertise, skill, experience, intention, passion? And not only do you get that at Cambridge Learn, you get access to the best teachers globally around the world. All our team is highly vested in education. They go through a rigorous vetting process to work at Cambridge Learn, and they all show deep, deep knowledge of understanding personalized education and the results thereof. So thank you so much for taking the time to join our open day. And I hope that our, all your questions have been answered. If you have any more questions, all our details will be provided to you. And we are really looking forward to joining you in this journey to make your child's lives a success. Thank you. Claudia, thank you so much. I can't tell you um, how pumped up I get when I hear people talking about uh, emotional intelligence. I mean, it is a huge part of the work that we do at Kindness Can. And from a school level, you know, whether or not we're speaking to teachers, uh, boards of school, governing bodies, or learners, and I love being in a room with learners because um, kind of unveiling and working on that relationship with self is such an important one. You know, core beliefs, um, self-talk, how to foster hope and resilience. I mean, that is just floating my boat in such a far out right way. And it's it's just so wonderful that that is such a, a focus point. Uh, it delights me no end. I can't even begin to go there. Thank you so much. I have so enjoyed um, this uh, open day. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. As we mentioned, there are specialists in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you have any questions, um, social media is a great place to follow us as well. Uh, as mentioned, this will be put up onto Facebook and onto YouTube. Uh, we also offer you a free uh, consult with, in, with any one of our specialists. So please, if you have any questions whatsoever, put your hand up. Uh, let's get you comfortable. Let's get you answers. And uh, again, from myself, Jane, Lindley Thomas, and the whole team, uh, we thank you for your time. Uh, we wish you all the best. Stay healthy, stay well, and uh, lots of love until we connect again.